Hey everybody, it's time for Facebook Friday. I hope you guys have had a great week. I have had a crazy week and I am glad to be back in my office with no doctor's appointments or errands to run. I've got lots of things to work on, lots of design work this week, and I'm very excited about today's projects. Hi everybody, I see you guys jumping on. So it looks like I am in the right area. Hi Vicki. I hope you guys are doing good. I have turned off my Wi-Fi today, hoping that we will be able to not have any glitches. I don't know, it's, you never know. Is it the Wi-Fi? Is it, you know, the phone? I never know, but hopefully today we will not have any glitches or crazy things happening. You never know. The dogs are in their bed taking a nap. So hopefully that won't disturb us either. Hi everybody. All right, I'm gonna jump right in. I've got a bunch of things to tell you and then today's projects kind of are kind of long. Um, so I wanna make sure to try to get done by three o'clock. All right, so welcome to Facebook Friday. If you've never joined me before, I do uh, Facebook Live on Fridays at two o'clock central. Um, I do usually three projects and I try to have a product focus. This week I'm focusing on the Forever Lovely Bundle, which is around here somewhere. Um, we're gonna make three cards today, no 3D items. I usually try to do a 3D item, but today it's all cards for you card lovers. Um, there is a PDF over on my blog that you can access, pinkbuckaroo.com. I will put the link at the top of this video when we're done. And under the third picture, you'll see a hyperlink. You click on it and it'll have this PDF that is here somewhere. I'm just lost. I don't know where everything is. I was super organized. Um, it'll show up. It's in here somewhere. Here it is. And it'll have all the product information and the project measurements down here. Now on the second page, I've got everything I'm getting ready to tell you about is listed here. Also on the bottom of that blog post, you'll find all the links. Um, the first thing I want to tell you is our tutorial bundle. I do these every month with some amazing demonstrators. We all do one tutorial and then we combine them together so that we have this giant PDF of tutorials and we give them to our customers for free for with a $50 purchase every month um, and we give them to our teams for free. The other way you can get them is to buy them. We have I have it in my PDF store for $15, but every six months we open up a subscription and the subscription begins the new round, the new six month period starts February, goes February through July. If you like these and maybe you're a demonstrator yourself or you have a demonstrator who you order with, but you want these, you can subscribe and I'll send them to you on the first of every month. They're $15 a month if you buy them one at a time, but if you buy the subscription, you're gonna get the sixth month for free. So you can either pay in one lump sum at the beginning, or you can sign up for me to bill you every month $15. Um, that, all that information is on the second post. So if you go to my blog, you'll see today's post for Facebook Friday. Underneath that this morning, I posted all those uh, links and information for the new round of tutorial bundles. And I thought I would show you guys um, my project for February. I think it might just be my favorite tutorial project I've ever done, and it's a sneak peek. So I'm just gonna show you fast, okay? Because I'm not supposed to show you. Hmm, we've got some weird hair going on there. Boy, let me tell you guys, looking at yourself in the camera when you're 42 years old is a little stressful. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that. Okay, ready? It's a cute box that holds tea. Isn't it cute? Okay, that's a sneak peek. That's all I can show you. But it's in that, it's gonna be in the one that comes out February 1st. So if you're interested in that, go over to my blog. You can subscribe. And if you subscribe this week until February 1st, you won't get it until February 1st. And then I'll deliver it straight to your mailbox the morning of February 1st. You'll be able to subscribe all during February also if you decide to do that. All right, the next thing, let's see what else is on there. Stamp Club To Go, you guys. I have this wonderful Stamp Club To Go program where um, if you've ever joined a club, you go to your demonstrator's house what, or somebody's house once a month, you make some projects and everybody puts in an order and everybody takes turn being the host and getting those stamping rewards. I do the same thing to go and it's basically an online club. You commit for six months and you put in a $35 minimum order every month and in turn I mail you three completed projects. 
card, a 3D, and either, your third option is an either. You can either get the scrapbook page or a second card that matches the scrapbook page if you're not a scrapbooker. That program, um, and then once in your six months, you get the stamp and rewards, the host rewards from everybody's orders that month. It's really fun. It's the, the one event that I've been doing since the day I became a demonstrator until now. It's very popular and it's fun to get that fun mail every month to get your order every month and then one month to get free stuff. I have new groups beginning February 1st. If you are interested in that, click on that link there on my blog, go over and read all the details and then email me, okay? Because we are looking for some new club members beginning February 1st. All right, next on the list is, oh, my new class. I hope you guys saw, I uploaded the video yesterday over on my Facebook page. Here it is. See if I can do it without toppling it. The sweetest thing stamp set. You guys know this one, right? You've seen it in the catalog. I love it. It's got this beautiful paper. All the details can be found over there on my blog, including a video where I talk more in detail about all the projects. But the deadline to register will be February 13th. There's four options for this class. The class that includes the bundle, the class that doesn't include the bundle, just the PDF option. I see some of you saying you already bought the PDF. And then a kit version for my team. They only, they get to get it for $13 because they're on my team. So if you are interested in this, I haven't even emailed it out, go check it out. I'm really, I really like this class a lot. All right, let's see what's next on the list. Oh, the starter kit. Have you guys heard about the starter kit during celebration? Just to remind you, right over my shoulder, there's a beautiful bag right there. One of the things you can get during celebration um, is that beautiful bag. Um, there are two options to join during celebration to buy the starter kit. We have added 46 people to my team as of today. Woo -woo, very excited about that. And those people have taken full advantage of the starter kit, which I'm trying to find for you, right here on page four of the celebration catalog. It's $99 and you get $175 in product, or $129, and you get $175 in product, plus that free bag right there. Okay, so click on that link if you want the details and you can find out all about it. Um, there's tons of benefits for joining my team, including free PDFs, discounted classes, um, celebrations, team meetings, Facebook group, all that. Okay, now let's see okay the my meant to be class my valentine's class you guys this one right here i have a couple of extra kits that include all the make and takes if you're interested in my meant to be class to go please let me know i have a couple extra and um if you're going to get them in time for valentine's day we need to take care of it this weekend get it in the mail to you quickly um you can find that information on my blog if you go back a, a week or so um, my post, maybe two weeks, Susan, I see you, Susan, email me. Um, and then um, we'll get it to you, okay? If you're interested, if you have questions, if you wonder where that link is, email me, because I have a few extras. I always cut a few extras just in case any of them get lost in the mail, because every now and then that happens. We know how the postal service is. Okay, um, I have this here just because I'm so proud of it. Look, I put all my paper pumpkin together this month. How many of you got paper pumpkin? It's stinking cute. And my, I only have one daughter left in elementary school and she was all about it. She's like, yes, I want those for my class. But these would be great. My mom, I don't know if she's watching. She has, she's a teacher and so she makes them for her students. Um, somebody else mentioned taking them to like the hospital where people are, are you know, long-term care. How fun would that be? I'm thinking about doing some alternatives to this um, because the stamps are so cute. I'm thinking maybe Tuesday's live, but I haven't I haven't decided yet, so stay tuned. But anyways, look at the Paper Pumpkin. If you haven't subscribed to Paper Pumpkin, why not, you guys? 20 bucks a month. You get all the projects that month, plus a stamp set and an ink spot, sometimes two ink spots. Um, and you can buy prepaid subscription where you pay for like six or 12 months at a time. And then you get celebration items on top of that. So it's a really good time to subscribe. Okay, I'm cleaning things off as we go. How about prizes? I've got prizes from last week. Two prizes, two ways to win. You can share my Facebook Live. And that 
that prize from last week is Jennifer Keith. She shared my video. She's the lucky winner. Jennifer Keith, I do not believe I have your address, so please message me. I have two weeks to get your e your um, mailing address to me, okay, Jennifer? And then the second person I do have, Betty, I know, Betty, I have your mailing address. So Betty Schuler, congratulations. They're both getting the Here Comes the Sun and a yard of each of the new occasion ribbons. Now this week I've got some really good prizes also. Two ways to win. You share the video. Thank you Lisa and Debbie. They just said they shared the video. Make sure you share and then hop over to my blog. Scroll to the bottom. There's a little widget where you enter your information. It's called Raffle Copter and it'll randomly pick somebody there. Okay. Um, and it, this week is, look I even tied it up all pretty. Um, all that you are stamp set and the the new balmy blue blends. So I have two of these to give away next week. Okay, share and go enter. All right, now, I think we're at the end of all my announcements. This, as you know, I call this Facebook Friday. It's like a little class. We do three projects. And if you order um, between now and Monday at midnight, a minimum of $30, I will send you the kit in the mail to make all three of these. Um, let me show you last week's. Here's last week's. Remember our Hala Valentine's? See, it comes with everything that you need. All you need is the stamps. I shouldn't say everything that you need. You're gonna do the stamping. I've done the die cutting, the scoring, the, all the sorting and cutting. It's all in there and I even add a little thank you tag in there. Um, so if you order between now and Monday at midnight, use the host code. It's right here on the PDF. Um, you're also going to see it when I flip the camera around, okay? Now, if your order is over $150, um, don't use the host code because you'll get Stampin' Rewards and I'd rather you get them. I'll still send you the make and takes. Catherine, thank you so much for asking about my girls. We had 4-H show this week um, and <laughs> we had a mixed bag. It seems like we can't have like 100% wins every year. It's one or the other, it seems like. Um, the thing I was most concerned about were my two little girls who were both showing rabbits in the same show. I just wanted them to either both place or not place. Last year, they didn't place. Then they had to turn over their animals, sobbing all the way home, crying for days, me included. It was traumatic and sad. It was their first year. This year, we got rabbits from a different place, different breeder, and they were beautiful and healthy and we didn't have any problems with them. And the girls, each they each enter a pen of rabbits under their name, but the rabbits truly were a team effort. They um, fed and watered together. The, the both pens were mixed between the, the girls' rabbits. You get four or five and then you pick the best three. So we had 10 rabbits and we had to pick three and three. So they placed out of 80, I don't know, like 85 entries, they placed uh, 22nd and 7th. They were so excited. Um, so tomorrow we go to auction and they will get money for college. They're, they're super excited. Now my oldest, um, she's done rabbits before and, and she did a goat for the first time last year and then she did a goat this year and the last Every year she places high. She's really, you know, it's always, she's the kid that everything comes easy for. Well, this year her goat was not a great goat. It had tons of issues. And uh, we just really went in nervous about it. And he was one position away from placing in the auction. So she was upset, but then tried to pretend like she wasn't. So, you know, it was a good and a bad. We're going to try again next year. That's all you can do. You know, it's life lessons. It's building character, hopefully. Um, I'm just glad it's over. <laughs> it's stress for mama. It's like six months of, you know, having extra kids, trying to take care of them, keep them alive, keep them healthy. So thank you for asking. That was kind of a long-winded answer. All right, let's flip this around because these projects are quite involved. All right, so you guys, I what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. Thank you so much for the congratulations, you guys. I will tell them. All right, I'm going to take this. Close your eyes for just a second. I'm going to turn the camera around. Um, 4-H is interesting, and I don't think I could have handled it at that age. Um, give your animals up for, you know, for them to then become what they are, livestock. 
Um, we, we don't really spend a lot of time thinking about that. We, this week, several times they've all said something about where their animals are now. And we just kind of say, you know, let's not think about it <laughs> because it's really sad. But it's good. It's good. They respond, the responsibility, the, you know, the hard work. It's good. Okay, so today we are doing Forever Lovely. Here are some samples. These are not the cards that we're making today. Um, these are some samples I made just straight from the catalog. Um, it's on page right here, page five. And at first glance, you're going to say that's Valentine's, but it's not. It has one Valentine's here. And everything looks Valentine's-y. That's why you think it's going to be Valentine's. So I did different colors for our projects today. So you could see that this is not your standard um, Valentine set. Um, these are straight from the catalog. I'm doing something similar to this today. Here's one we made at on stage. This was our first go round, which is a really simple card. Um, not a lot of die cutting, fussy, fussy die cutting. So I really like that one. And then this one, you'll notice today's cards that I do are um, similar to these two. And then this is one that I made that is a reject for today. I didn't like it. I wasn't happy with it, but it's still all right. And then this is the project in the tutorial bundle this month, um, in January's tutorial bundle. And it has a, it's a bag made with a stitch rectangle and then these beautiful pieces that we're going to use today too. All right, so there's just a few extra ideas. Let me show you today's projects and you'll see that they are not, let me move stuff out of the way, they are not your typical Valentine's projects, right? Not, they don't have anything to do with Valentine's. These are not Valentine cards. So get that out of your minds. Don't think about Forever Lovely as a Valentine set because it's not. All right, so we're going to do, we're going to start with this one right here. Let me get my tray over here. I have everything sorted out and we will be ready to go. Here's the bundle, Forever Lovely. Here are the stamps, got some really pretty sentiments and I really like those hearts. But then it's also this distinctive stamp design that Stampin' Up! has developed where it's just a flat stamp and it stamps with lots of texture and dimension. Um, and then of course, matching framelits, we always like that. I am using Blushing Bride and Pear Pizzazz. Okay, let's see. Now you guys, as normal, I have pre-recorded clean versions of these projects. So this week or next week, if you get the make and takes and you wanna make these, just go to YouTube and you'll find them over there um, so you don't have to weed through all of my chatter on Facebook Live. All right, I see you guys commenting, but I'm not gonna look because I'll be distracted. I'll catch up with you guys in a minute. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, we're gonna do some die cutting. Whoops, I've got a stray pearl. We're gonna do some die cutting here with this really intricate die. It looks like this. And then we're gonna do the stamping so that the stamps line up with the die, the die cut. Okay, we're gonna do that with our Stamparatus. But before we use the Stamparatus, we really do need to bring over the big shot and do that die work first. So I have two pieces of Whisper White. They both measure three and three fourths by five. And I'm gonna put them on my big shot platform with my magnetic, uh, my big shot with my magnetic platform. And I want you to look at this. Every time I cut this for it to be that edge, I think that this is the edge. See how it goes round like that? But that's not, this is actually where it's going to um, it's actually going to cut off right here and this is the embossing side. So you need to find, this is how I remember, see that cute little flower right there? That's the side that's going to cut things off. So put it on your page, your, your uh, cardstock. It's a little bit smaller than the actual die, which is not a problem. We're just going to do part of it. And I'm going to bring it down a little bit lower because earlier when I did it, I had it too high. All right, run it through. And you want to go through twice. This is an intricate die. And so it needs a, a little bit extra time. See how that one just pulls, pulls right off, just cuts it all the way off. It's an edge. Then very carefully, look at the back. See how intricate that is. Now I'm going to very carefully, very carefully pull that off. And then we can move this out of the way for now. Then you can get your 
dye brush and very carefully, hi Lisa, Indiana, it's good to see my team on here. Thanks for joining me. All right, so use your dye brush, get out some of those pieces. And this one too, this one's got a lot of pieces in it and I'll show you, <laughs> I'll show you later a different way that I get these out but we'll wait because it makes a mess. All right, so see that just gets, gets them all out nice and easy so you don't have to stand there and poke, poke, poke like we used to. Okay, this, I will say this framelit set is kind of messy because it makes all those little, what I call doodads. All right, now we're going to layer up our Stamparatus. Stamparatus is our stampin', pos, stamping, pos, stamp, stamp positioning tool. I don't know what's going on with me. Can't get it out. You're going to, because these are photopolymer, we're going to put in that foam mat first. And then I'm going to use grid paper. Grid paper is going to help me keep these pages um, where they need to be. All right. And here's my magnet. I've got one on the back. I'm going to pull it off in a second. But I like to keep them both. Yeah, I don't want to have both of them just hanging around because they go together. They're, they um, attract each other. And then they sometimes shatter. That's why I have... Um, duct tape on mine to help prevent that if it does happen but I don't want to pull the other one out until I have this one set set down okay that one's got a little smudge so I'm going to put my paper right here okay and actually I'm going to start with this magnet up here at the top now I'm going to set this down here on top here's our little die cut piece I'm going to grab that other magnet once your magnet is on your base it'll stay there it's not going to jump to the other one and put that down on the bottom. Now I'm going to grab those stamps and they're kind of a, a weird looking like you're like what's happening in, with this stamp. It's a long line of flowers but they're designed to match this little die cut and you're going to just kind of set it down in there. You can kind of feel it when it sits down in that you know the um, parts that you've cut out from your die cut. Now go down and pick it up carefully and now we're going to take this part off I'm going to put that back there if you take your stamp case and set it underneath your plate it gives your plate a flat surface to stamp on all right blushing bride blushing bride ink and we're going to stamp right on there all right let's see Ta-da! Very nice. Now, if you wanted it darker, you could re-ink it and stamp it again because it's going to be in exactly the same position. But this is the distinctive stamps, and that you would lose all of your texture and um, fine lines and stuff if you did that. So we're not going to do that. We're going to leave it as it is. Now I'm going to come back over here and grab the leaves. It's kind of a weird stamp too. And I'm going to set them down. Again, it's photopolymer so you can see exactly where you're stamping. Move it to where I want it. Lay that down. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Go back down, paper. The photopolymer uh, stamps are a little sticky, so don't rip it up. you got to go slowly because it can still pull your paper up. All right, um, pair pizzazz. And when you use the grid paper, that ensures that you know where your paper's going. If you, if it does come back up, you can set it back down. All right, very nice. Now, while I have my stamp apparatus here, I'm going to stamp my sentiment. And on my card, you'll notice that I did the flowers down. Um, on that other card that I showed you from the catalog, they had the flowers up. See, I kind of flipped it. It's kind of opposite. So I'm gonna put, this paper back in here, put it down. Then I'm gonna take my plate and turn it around so I don't have to stop and clean my stamps. And then we're gonna use You Are Loved. I like this sentiment. I was thinking this would be a cute card for my daughters. You are loved. Now, if you don't like that sentiment, just pick a different one. It could be a wedding card, it could be a thank you card. It could be, well, now I feel like my paper got picked up. Let's try that again. Hmm, let's try it again. Um, you know, that's the thing with the sentiment, with a card like this, you can, okay, I'm overthinking it. 
Oh, come on, stay. You can just change the sentiment and use it for anything you want. All right, pair pizzazz and stamp it. All right, don't you love the Stamparatus? It's so great. Now we're gonna use the Stamparatus again in a minute. So I am gonna have to take this quickly. Oh my gosh, these projects are gonna take, take a long time today. I wanna get done by three, but I don't wanna rush. My daughter, my little one, she's riding her bike home from school today. So if I go a little bit late, we'll be all right. All right, let's move all these back over. Did I clean these? I don't remember. I think I did. Move these back over. Hello, everybody who's joining. Thank you so much for joining me today. All right, we are ready to assemble. Let me close these. You know, this, um, when you make a card that's all white, the biggest problem is not getting ink all over it because I always have ink on my fingers. Are you guys like that? Do you do that? Yeah, it's a problem. All right, adhesive is over here, of course. All right, so this is a piece of soft sea foam. It's so beautiful, the soft sea foam. I'm gonna put that down there flat and then I'm gonna bring my pear pizzazz card base and put that there like that and now look how nice that's gonna look right over that and I want to pop it up I want it to have some dimension so we're gonna do some dimensionals and usually I only do like three maybe four but because down here we really want it to stay lifted I'm gonna be extra generous with my dimensionals put one in each corner and then how about one in the middle yeah, Vicki, I love the Stamparatus too. Thank you, Mary, you're so sweet. All right, let's line it up. And if we took our time and did it right, everything lines up, love it. All right, we're gonna do one more little die cut. Um, some little flowers that we're gonna pop up. And they look like this right here, they're all connected. So that's one set of teeny tiny framelits you don't have to worry about losing. Not that I would know about losing framelits. Ha ha. All right, see, they just all come right out. And you know what I was going to say today? I wanted to make sure you guys notice how these framelits, there are quite a few small ones. So be very careful when you are using them. Put them all back right away because they like to stick to your paper and get thrown in the trash. And that's very sad. Um, I want to show you all a trick. I didn't do this in the plain recording. Um, a customer a long time ago showed me this. If you put your flower in your hand and you take your stylus and you just kind of go around like this in the center, little circles, look what happens. The flower pops up. It's not flat anymore. So Alicia, she was the one that showed me. I don't think she's doing stamping up stuff anymore, but she was pretty smart. And now I always do that with my small little flowers, just gives them a little bit of dimension. All right, blue dots it is. Well, goodness, did I leave all my adhesive over here today? Got everything ready and then I started doing some design. By the way, I have another class coming out in February. Hopefully we'll announce it on Monday. It's the Happy Tails, you know, the little dog with a dog punch. And I have it all designed. I just need to get it typed up and photographed and ready for you guys. It's so cute. So that will be towards the end of February. All right, so let's take these. I've put them on glue dots. Let's try it again. I've put them on glue dots. There we go. And I'm just going to add them here. See if I can remember where they go. This little set, um, the framelits have all these little pieces that really accent and make this um, set really, really cute. All right, now we need some, oh, you know what I wanna use? I take your pick tool because I love doing this. It picks up the pearls. All right, behave. It picks up the pearls and then you just set them down. Look at that. Picks it up, sets it down. Oh my gosh. I need to start adding this um, 
on my supply list for the projects because this, look at that. It's so brilliant. The little tacky end there picks them up and because they have, um, uh oh, because they have adhesive on the back, then they stick down on the card. Oh, I love it. So smart. Okay, last but not least, a twine bow. These are very springy colors. I don't usually create in subtle colors. Um, so, you know, subtles are a family of lighter colors. Oh, well, that needs to just start over. Um, subtles are light colors, soft sea foam, pear pizzazz, blushing bride, and I usually stick to the brights. Um, but I just kind of started with these light greens and light pinks and loved it. And it's very springy. I know we're far from spring right now, but it'll be here before we know it. And done. A linen thread bow. What do you guys think? I think I like it, even though it's not bright colors. All right, so that is project number one. Very fancy. I'm gonna move on to project number two. Oh my goodness, thanks guys. That's a lot of hearts. I do appreciate that. Oops, moving the camera, moving the camera. Okay, card number two. We I stuck with the same kind of color palette here. Let's see, where am I gonna put that one? There you go. Um, but it's got a different feel for it. And we're gonna actually do some embossing with this new uh, Crackle Paint background stamp. Can you see that? That's the Crackle Paint background stamp. And I had it marked in the catalog. Oh, that, that cord, sorry guys, every time I move this tray, it moves that cord, which in turn moves the camera. My camera hangs from the ceiling, so usually nothing will um, move it except for that one cord. All right, here it is, page 44. Have you guys even noticed it? I feel like it's kind of hidden because it's so minor, but there it is right there, and that's what we're gonna use. Now, I had to take a look at it to see which part of that does the crackle, you know, is it, does the stamp do the gray part or does the stamp do the white part? Does that make sense? The stamp is actually the white part, those little lines. So to get the white on the gray granite, we are gonna have to emboss. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna bring the stamparatus back out and we only need one of these plates. We put one of these magnets back here for now. And then we're gonna take that foam part off because the Crackle Paint background stamp is red rubber, which means it already has that padding right there. So that's what we're gonna do. Now, we're gonna do this on gray granite. Why do I put the things I need first on the bottom of the tray? It would make sense to do the opposite. Oh, goodness. Okay, here we go. Now this piece measures four by five and a fourth, but when I do background stamps, I like to start with a half a piece of cardstock. That's gonna give me a lot of room to do this. I'm gonna put this magnet here. I'm gonna set my background stamp right in the middle and then pick it up with that plate. Now, because we're going to emboss, we need to prepare our cardstock and remove all of the static. All right, so just kind of tap it on there, rub it around, and this is gonna remove any static and prevent those tiny little embossing particles to stick where we don't wanna stick it. Now, Versamark is your clear ink that is pretty much strictly for embossing. It stays sticky and wet, and then that embossing powder sticks to it until, in, well, not until, it sticks to it and then it stays sticky and kind of matte looking until you heat it with a heat tool. All right, so lots of pressure, you guys. Don't just sit down and push it with your fingertips. That's not enough. You need to stand up and push it all over, okay? Oh, thank you, Alessandra, the take your pick tool. I was talking about it and I didn't even say what it was called. Take your pick tool. Yes, and Alessandra put the number. Alessandra, thank you. That's very helpful. All right, now you can see, you can't really see it until I kind of 
turn it and the light hits it. Now, can you guys see it? See what I'm talking about? It's just the white that is the ink. So if you want white lines, you have to emboss. All right, so now let's move this out of the way. I'm gonna take my white embossing powder. Is the Take Your Pick tool in, which catalog did that come in? Wasn't that in the holiday catalog? And then it was a carryover, and it's gonna be in the annual catalog, I'm sure, in June. Is it? Is it even pictured in the occasions catalog? I can't think right now. All right, put the white, white embossing powder all over it, and there you have it. Now, this is gonna take a few minutes to heat with a heat tool. I'm gonna do just a little bit of it to show you, and then for the magic of TV, I have one that's already done. So what you do, you get your heat tool, and you just kind of, it takes a little bit to, heat, to warm up to the right temperature, and once it does, you're gonna see that embossing powder, see right there, start to turn really, really white. And that's how you know it kind of liquefies and then hardens, if that makes sense. All right, so it does take a little bit of time when you're embossing in a whole background. But I am prepared and ta-da, that's what it looks like. You're gonna cut it down to four and five and a fourth. All right, now for the second part. Let's get all these layers. Let's see, I saw somebody answer my question. Vicki, yes, the Take Your Pick tool, the diamond paint, it works awesome. Oh, okay, good, it's online. Okay, Alessandra says it's online. Very good, thank you guys for helping me out. Again, we've got soft sea foam. This is a subtle that I love. I just love, love, love soft sea foam. And it's hard to appreciate it until you've seen it in person. All right, and then we're gonna take this. This is all gray granite. Did I even mention the color? It's on the PDF, you guys. It's hard to remember everything when you're making a video. All right, there we go. Now, let's do the other parts. We're gonna use this large flower right here. This is the single large flower. I've got some Whisper White. We're gonna stamp it twice in Blushing Bride and once in Powder Pink. All right, we want two dark flowers and one light flower. Yes, I love that white crackle on the gray also. What I wanna do is sit down and do the white crackle in a bunch of different colors so we can kind of see, you know, all the different ways it would look. I just really love that whole um, crackle look. It's very on trend right now. Okay, now while we're here with the big shot, we're gonna do some other die cutting. So let me get this all set up. Let's see, I'm gonna do it this way so you guys can see. I'm gonna take this one, the three, and I only have one framelit, but I wanna cut them three times. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have to go through three times, but we can get some other things done. I would say, kill two birds with one stone, but I heard that that's not PC anymore. Did you guys hear that? <laughs> so I won't say it. All right, now, this magnet is jumping around a little bit. If your magnet jumps around, just let it jump to where it wants to go and move your paper there because you're not gonna win. Magnets are the boss. You just gotta let them, let them go where they wanna go. All right, we're gonna do all of these little guys in both soft sea foam and pear pizzazz, okay? All right. The smaller the framelit I have found, the more likely it is to jump around. I've heard many um, things regarding that situation. Did you see how I dropped that framelit? That's how I got those out. <laughs> That's the um, non, watch. See, it just pops right out. That's a non-commissioned um, unofficial way to get framelits out. This one never does it. I should have known better. Um, and it does make a mess because it sends all your little things flying. And I'm just doing this with my take your pick tool real quick. Okay, so we're switching these up, doing it different colors. I've heard many things, many reasons about why this, the magnets cause, or why the framelits jump. Um, and I don't, what I believe to be true 
and I don't even remember where I heard this, is that the magnets, there's a bunch of little round magnets in there. And after time, they begin to kind of flip and then they are, you know, pushing against each other. I don't know. I kind of like that reason. I don't know if that's true, but I'm gonna go with it. All right, so now we've got all of these. Move all of those out of the way. And then we've got one more flower. And then I heard someone else say if you drop drop your magnetic platform that that can cause the magnets to turn, but I don't believe I've ever dropped my magnetic platform. I think it's just a natural reaction of magnets. All right, how are we doing on time? Uh-oh, all right, speed it up. Speeding things up, let's move this out of the way over here and let's, oh, we gotta do one more stamp. We gotta do the sentiment. We're gonna do this in pear pizzazz on this piece of white. I'll, I love you, I, what is wrong with me? I cannot speak today. I'll love you until the day after forever. Oh, it's so cute. Now if you don't, if that doesn't fit what you wanna do, again you guys, use something else. If these framelits are too lovey-dovey, I mean, I don't know who I'd give this to besides my husband, maybe my kids, but I think using a thank you or a something else. I mean, we've all got tons of sentiment stamps. I assume that we could substitute. All right, I'm gonna take this piece. Do you see how I just trimmed it? There's no measurement, I just trimmed it so it's as tall as the words. I'm gonna trim that end, and then I'm gonna trim that in, leaving a little bit of white there. All right, so now we're gonna start with, let me remember how I did this. Start with a dark, one of the dark flowers, and then put that flat and then your dimensionals on your light, light flower and a dimensional on your dark flower. Oh, Elizabeth, you're so smart that she says that sentiment would be perfect on a scrapbook page of your kids and grand or grandkids. Yeah, you're totally right, absolutely right. That would be perfect. All right, I'm gonna slide this. Looks like I need to cut a little bit more off slide it right there. Now I'm gonna take all my little dudes. Here's my brush. Let me do it the right way. The recommended way. And look, I'm putting all my framelits back on their sheet because <laughs> these are the ones that I will lose. The teeny tiny ones. All right, now I'm just gonna grab some glue dots. And some of these stems might need to be trimmed as you go. We'll just have to see. I just put a glue dot right there on that stem, pick it up, slide it under, come down here. I really like this one. Is that a, is that a certain kind of foliage you plant? People will know, you'll tell me. I don't know. Foliage, plant, I don't know. I have no idea. You guys can tell me, but I like it. You know that stamp that we had um, in the fall, the one country home that had all those funky things in the, in the, you know, the rustic jar picture. I knew those things had names, but I had, I just had no idea what they were. And you guys knew right away what they were called. All right. One more down here. Looks like I've got a couple extras. That's okay. You can add them in if you want. Thanks for sharing, Terry. I appreciate you guys. When you share that video, that does help me. Oh, let's see. We'll put this one as a pair right here. We got to do one more thing, you guys. And it's the most fun part of this card. I thought I was done. I was like, hmm, it needs something else. And then I thought, what about a butterfly? These are the butterfly elements from the Celebration Catalog, the wood elements. I'm going to use this butterfly. It comes with a ton of butterflies and a ton of flowers. But I didn't like it in the wood. It'll be, it would be all right, but I saw one of the Stampin' Up! artisans had embossed hers, so I thought, yes, we are going to emboss. So grab something to hold on to your little, your little um, butterfly with. These are some kind of jewelry. I don't even know how I have these. I've had them for a million years, but just something to hold it. And you're going to stamp it on that Versamark pad and then dip it into your white embossing powder like that. 
Looks like we've got a little bit on the ends. Hold on. I did stick my pinchers. I don't even, what are these called? These are called crimpers or something. I don't know. Something to do with jewelry making. I never made jewelry. I don't know how I ended up with them, but they were great for this because you can't hold this when you emboss. You've got to have something to hold it. I used to have another tool that I do believe was a scrapbooking tool. And um, it was longer and easier to hold it. And I cannot find it. I'm super mad. I've been looking for it for a while. And I, I have to just give up and say it's gone. But these guys, you could also do tweezers. I have, a, I have a pair of tweezers that stay in my little my little junk drawer in my craft room in here. Oh, I did it again. Oh, I'm so sorry. All right. There we go. Look, now he's a white butterfly. Doesn't that go better with a card? I think it does. All right, so give it a few seconds to really dry, and then we're just gonna stick it on with a glue dot. Isn't it pretty? Now, if you have some little of these, um, what are they called? Love what you do. You can add a few of those. Those aren't the right, they aren't exactly the same color, but they're in the same family, and I think it works great. And hey, look, no bow. Are you guys proud of me? I didn't put a bow on this card. To all of you who asked me why I put a bow on every card, now you can't ask me that anymore because I made a card with no bow. It's very difficult. <laughs> all right, what do you guys think? You like this card? Thank you. Yeah, it's a it's kind of strange color combination, not something I usually um, do, but man, I love it too. I love it. Okay, we got one more. Let's see. Oh, and I have got 15 minutes. Easy peasy. I can get it done. Okay, got to get a drink of water. You guys, I'm doing so good drinking my water, not having my Diet Cokes. I am not 100% off Diet Coke, but man, I can tell you that I have improved my Diet Coke situation tremendously. And what does it take 21 days to make a habit? All right, what's today? The 20... Well, whatever, I started on the first, so I'm past the 21 days. Y'all should be proud of me. It's very hard. All right, card number three. Let's look at them all. See how they're all different? I don't have the other one. Where is it? Different colors. I really was trying to avoid the Valentine color scheme. And look at this one. This one is, I think, more of kind of what I, what I do typically. A lot of black and white with pops of color, um, you know, bold. I don't know. I just really, really like this one too, but it's totally different. And can you see the paper that it uses? Yep. That's that celebration paper that is absolutely gorgeous. All right. Now we're going to do this die cutting here again with these fancy die cuts. I'm going to tell you about this word in a minute. It's a different set that you have to have because it's awesome. All right. Grab your big shot. Ah, uh, Trisha, you're so funny. Thank you. All right, these two pieces, Blushing Bright and Whisper White, are three by four, four and a fourth. Now remember, don't write it down, just go over and get this PDF. Let me double check myself. What did I say, three by four and a fourth, yes. And we're going to first, we're gonna start with the background one. See the back, no, no, I lied. We're gonna start with the front one, the white one, okay? So you're gonna get this, and remember, you're gonna, am I the only one, those of you that already have it, am I the only one that wants to make this the cutting edge? It just feels like that's where it should be cutting. But it's not, look at the tiny flower, that's the side that cuts. So put it all the way to the edge of your paper, and I just line it up so that I've got each top end here kind of touching the top of that paper. All right, and now we're gonna run it through. Catherine, it is, it is so hard. Diet Coke is my vice. I mean, I don't really drink al alcohol that much. I, you know, other things don't entice me like Diet Coke does. All right, see how that um, piece came right off? Now I'm gonna carefully pull that off and watch. <gasps> Did you see that? <laughs> it makes a big mess, but majority of them come right out. There's a couple that I need to poke out. When I'm in a hurry, that's what I well, it didn't really help me that much because there's quite a few there. Okay, now down here we're gonna do the same thing. Kind of center those, get them as close to the edge as we can. 
There we go. I've also given up sugar, and that I have been 100% at. That has not been as hard because the Diet Coke is such like a, a habit of, you know, when we go to the movies, I have a Diet Coke. I have, you know, when I have in the morning, I have a Diet Coke. All these things. It's just a really hard. It's like a smoker. Like if you try to stop smoking cigarettes because it's a habit. <sighs> but there's no patch for Diet Coke. Okay. So now I've got these cut out. I'm going to get my Blushing Bride piece. And I'm going to put it right here on that. And I want to get the edge piece right here. And it's going to cut the pink so that it's just the edge going around this part. So what I'm going to do is kind of lay that there to where it matches and then carefully pull the white out. Make sure nothing moves. Put it on. If it slips, you have to start over. All right. Come back. Yes, no sugar. I've done, you know, I've been doing low carbs for a long, long time. Um, so the no sugar isn't quite as difficult for me. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like sugar, <laughs> but there are a lot of substitutes for sugar that kind of help, um, some natural things, but Diet Coke, there's nothing. Water just is not the same. All right. So see how I've lined it up down here on the bottom. Let's make sure that it's, we've got to make sure it's lined up here first and then lined up there and then pull it out carefully and put it down. I wish I liked coffee. I wish Trish I could I could substitute coffee because then I could make that sugar-free and low carb and all that and doesn't have aspartame in it and I just do not like coffee at all. Okay, so now look, let's see did we did it pass the test? Look, it sure did. Now, you guys can also use like some washi tape to hold that dye down or a post-it note if, it, if you feel like, you know, like, oh, it's going to move. Um, but it, it really isn't too hard to get those to line up if you do it that way. All right, get all the doodads out. And, oh, I should have left that over here because we got to do one more die cut. Now I'm going to put some adhesive. And I'm doing this flat. I'm not doing this with dimensionals. White tea with raspberry at Starbucks. Well, I'm not worried about the caffeine so much, Carla, as the sugar and that aspartame. I think it's the aspartame and the Diet Coke that's gonna slowly, you know, eat me from the inside. But, and then to try to do not carbs, I don't know. It's just like, I can't eat anything but like <laughs> lunch meat and I don't know. <laughs> but hey, I feel better. I feel a lot better. You you know, when you come off that Christmas detox, it, it's hard in the beginning, but then you just feel better. Okay, so the word on this card, I didn't do any stamping on the front. I used that die cut. This is the well-written framelits. They're in the occasions catalog. Um, look how many words are on here. I almost couldn't fit all of them on my little card. Um, so lots and lots of different variations and options. And so we're gonna use the thanks and we're going to run it through and let's see how it comes out. Look, it just, I mean, it just falls right out. It's so good. Stampin' Up! has just really come a long way with their framelits, their dies are so good. All right, now I would tell you that the best way to adhere this word is to use that multi-purpose I don't know why I'm not using my brush, it's sitting right here, to use the multi-purpose adhesive sheet. But I didn't do that ahead of time. So that means my two choices are um, glue dots or the, I am losing my train of thought, or the fine tip glue pen. What I've done is just put a little strip of vellum right here just to kind of make this pop off a little bit more. So you guys know how I feel about liquid adhesive. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. I'm a very messy liquid, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We've got a big like giant bubble of adhesive. Gotta get that off first because that's not gonna help us. Don't know where that came from. I think it was so excited to finally get out of the bottle. 
Oh gosh, it's got giant dots. I'm gonna make a huge mess. I try not to even squeeze it. That usually keeps the mess from coming. I don't know why it did that. All right, I'm gonna lay it down. Oh, oh goodness, let's see if I can get it. Nobody move. Oh, stick down. Okay, okay, there we go. <laughs> I'm a mess with liquid adhesive, you guys. I'm a mess. That's why I like my glue dots. Okay, but the fine tip glue pen is perfect for that. If you've got a really good steady hand, the best thing that I have learned is to not um, squeeze the bottle. Just let those tiny drops that 99.9% .9 of the time come out. I don't know what happened today, but let those just be the little dots that you do. Now, I didn't show you the inside of the card, and that's where we're gonna stamp. Look, there are those cute little hearts. The world needs more people like you. Isn't that a great sentiment? That is a stamp set called Part of My Story, again, from the Celebration Catalog. You can only get it for free when you spend $50. And it's really interesting um, stamps. And I believe, I know someone will correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this is the stamps that they made um, a while back they asked demonstrators um, for quotes. And um, we all sent things in. And I believe this is a stamp set that came out of that collection. I um, mean, there's some really, really cute little things in there. So that's the one I decided to use um, separately from the, the Forever Lovely set. All right, I'm going to stamp these cute little hearts in Blushing Bride. Close the stamp out here. Close it, close it, close it. All right, and then my Black Memento right underneath like that. The world needs more people like you. Oh, that's that's really sweet. All right, we're gonna adhere that to the inside. I'm trying to give that thanks quite a long time to dry because I was very heavy handed. It wasn't my fault. All right, basic gray. <laughs> four by five and a fourth. And here's my favorite paper. If you are getting these make and takes in the mail, it means I love you a lot. I'm giving you, look at this giant size of designer series paper I'm giving you. From all the pieces I've been hoarding, you're gonna get a card front size. I love you guys. See, this is what it looks like on the back. This is the Botanical Butterflies DSP, again in the Celebration Catalog. Free with a $50 purchase. And one side is all the butterflies, but the back side's my favorite with all the black and white patterns. All right, I'm still waiting on that. That's still looking like it's, <laughs> just gonna slide off. I really would like to leave it there for like 30 minutes, but I know it's not an option. I'm gonna take my basic black baker's twine and tie it here around the, the fold of the card. Hey you guys, I would love to know what you wanna see showcased. What do you want my product of the week to be? It's, it's getting like, I don't know, I don't know what to do, I'm having a hard time choosing. So give me some suggestions. I like to have an assignment. Right now, I'm just gonna glue this right across there. <gasps> Very cute, uh-oh, where's the adhesive? Come on, stick, there we go. Now wait, there's more. Where's my take your pick tool? Take your pick tool, item number. Alessandra's gonna fill me in. All right, here we go. Stick these little rhinestones down, basic rhinestones, Stampin' Up's first rhinestone product we all fell in love and now we've got tons of them ta-da love it all right what do you guys think what do you guys think classic car susan that's a great idea I've, i keep skipping over classic car because i feel like i'm saving it you know to later classic car in the fishing set yes yes this bundle you know what's so funny about this bundle vicky i saw what you just said you're gonna have to get this bundle now the funniest thing is it's in the very beginning of the catalog. And when I opened the catalog, I looked at it and was like, meh, that's not for me, meh. But I ended up getting it. I can't remember, I guess I got it for just for Valentine's Day, I was thinking. And it ended up being one of the things I played with the very most when I got all of my new products. Um, and uh, it has just really surprised me. So here are the three that we made today. I hope you guys like the colors. It's very different. It's not Valentine's. The original ones that I cased from the catalog are more typically Valentine colors, even though this one's the only one that says Valentine's Day. See how that is similar 
to that. That's vellum right there that they put on the back. I just love it and I think it's a set that can carry you through um, lots of different occasions. And like, um, I can't remember now who mentioned it just a minute ago said that that sentiment, this one, would be great for scrapbooking. I don't know, I just really think that it, it is a multi-use set. Now don't forget, if you want these three make and takes in the mail next week, you need to put your order in by Monday at midnight, $30 minimum, using that host code, unless, you're, unless your order is over $150, then don't use the host code, because you're gonna get stamp and rewards. Um, do you guys know where in the catalog the stamp and rewards are listed? Well, here's my celebration catalog. I'll show you. At the beginning, right here, there's a chart. It, it says party sales. It doesn't have to be party sales. It can be your sales. So maybe you have a $150 or $250 order. That's how much stamp and rewards you're going to get. Stamp and re rewards means free stuff. Anything you want including the host sets in both catalogs. Um, so, and during celebration, right here when you hit 250, you actually get an extra $25. So if your order, or maybe you combine orders with a girlfriend, if your order is 250, you're gonna get $25 plus another $25, so $50 to spend on free stuff. Plus, with a $250 order, you've gotten five things from this catalog. There's a lot of things to choose in here. And by the way, I think this guy is going to be our star next week. I've got some funny things planned for him. All right. Okay, you guys. Thank you. Don't forget all the things that I mentioned, the tutorial bundle subscription, new stamp club groups, new class, and of course that starter kit. Um, starter kit deal is amazing. If you have questions, email me. If you are looking for the PDF, it's on my blog. And I will see you guys next week, Tuesday at 2 o'clock over on Pink Buckaroo Designs. Friday at two o'clock right here. All right, you guys, thanks for joining me and I will see you next week. Bye.